This video is sponsored by workinbiotech.com. Healthcare is one of the four major global problems we face. How can we make effective medicines that are cheap and widely accessible? Well, this requires biology and technology. Biotechnology. Technology that uses biology, or biology combined with technology. But anyway, translating all this biology science stuff to effective therapeutics requires identification of effective treatments, safety testing, testing of bioavailability, pharmacokinetics, clinical trial primary endpoints, then manufacturing and production of the therapeutic. And this all requires funding and the right team behind it to make it happen. One field of biotech has been growing rapidly over the last few years, rejuvenation biotech, and it doesn't look like it's slowing down. So why? What do you need to know about it, and what are the promises and challenges they face? Well, we'll address these questions in this video. So to start with, what even is rejuvenation biotech? Well, from the early work of nuclear cloning from John Gurdon's frog experiments to the cloning of Dolly the sheep, it was known that there was potential for turning back the biological clock. In the case of Dolly, she was the first mammal cloned from an adult cell, the DNA containing nucleus of an adult cell was taken out and placed in an unfertilised egg. This was then used to make Dolly. During Dolly's life, she gave birth to six lambs, and this proved for the first time that a cell taken from a specific part of the body could recreate a whole individual. And somehow, the nucleus of the adult cell with the genetic information was getting reset, or you could say rejuvenated, such that it could go on to generate Dolly. But human cloning isn't what these rejuvenation companies are working on, well, at least as far as I can tell you, from the publicly available data. So, what are they doing? Well, a more recent landmark in rejuvenation came from Shinya Yamanaka of the now-termed Yamanaka factors, 4 factors, OCT4, SUX2, KLF4 and MYC, that when expressed in differentiated cells, converted them back to stem cell-like cells, so-called induced pluripotent stem cells. And these cells have the potential to divide and replicate, but also to turn back into different cell types. You could do this inside an individual, so-called in vivo, or take the cells out, e.g. with blood cells, reprogram them and differentiate them, and then put them back, so-called ex vivo approaches. Anyway, most of the excitement is with the in vivo approaches, since it is thought to have a larger impact, and recently I've reported on some latest publications using these different reprogramming technologies in mice. The strategy more frequently employed now is partial reprogramming, rejuvenation without losing a cell's identity, but still with the potential to get rejuvenated. The rationale is that with this approach, it's thought to be effective, but also safer, as it reduces the likelihood of tumours or teratomas from forming. But what commercial potential do they have for therapeutics, and what companies are out there? Well, this table shows a pretty up-to-date list of companies that are in the so-called rejuvenation tech space. You have Ajax Therapeutics developing tissue regeneration, Autos Labs, the humongous startup with $3 billion in funding for basic research to then develop rejuvenation programming therapeutics, <laughs> Calico, the Google spin-out started in 2013, which seems to also now be shifting focus to rejuvenation. Gamito, focusing on ovarian ageing. Iduna Therapeutics, using just OSK for reprogramming. New Limit, co-founded by Brian Armstrong, who I spoke to at the end of last year. Retro Biosciences, a new company with the mission to add 10 years to healthy human lifespan, who've more recently announced that they've got $180 million in funding for three programmes in cellular reprogramming, autophagy and plasma-inspired therapeutics. Shift Bioscience, who actually gave me a tour around their building, Turn Biotechnologies, mRNA reprogramming and Youth Bio, all working more on partial reprogramming. But what is the potential? Well, biotech in general has been having some great interest and success lately, Take a look here at this chart that shows the quick recovery of biotech in the spring of 2020. Although it's fair to say that this was largely driven due to the excitement around finding treatments or preventative solutions to COVID-19. 
And although the chart only goes up to 2021, and I know in general markets have been a bit all over the place since then, it nonetheless still feels like a new wake-up call for interest in the potential of biotech. In fact, it was during the pandemic that Altos Labs was ideated by Yuri Milner and Rick Klausner on a morning walk in California. Apparently. So why is biotech and rejuvenation biotech staying so hot? Well, I think there are two main drivers, innovation and demand. The innovation stems from the continual development of research tools and cheaper costs of high throughput sequencing and testing. This includes things like CRISPR, single cell omics tools, whether it be looking at the transcriptome, methylome, chromatin structure or DNA sequencing, as well as the incorporation of machine learning to interpret this vast amount of data being generated. And then demand. First is the changing demographics. A combination of both longer lives and declining birth rates has resulted in there being more people over 65 than under 5 years, and this trend is predicted to keep increasing. The problem is that healthcare hasn't kept up and the growing population threatens the healthcare sector. Treating the diseases of ageing like cancer, neurodegeneration and cardiovascular disease is expensive, and so the idea is that a more cost-effective strategy would be to just target ageing, and this could be something given and tailored to everyone. And the idea with these rejuvenation approaches is that they don't just slow down the progression of these diseases, but would hopefully prevent or even reverse some of the disease manifestations. So there's demand, and this demand was boosted again by COVID-19, which raised awareness of how much pressure can be placed on the healthcare sector when we're ill-prepared. Now, ultimately, many of these companies are new and are riding this wave of innovation and understanding and demand for treatments. But what challenges do these companies, and well, biotech companies in general, actually face? Well, I've just listed here a couple of ideas that will probably come to your mind as well, such as the approach they're taking, their model tissue or organism to work with, whether it's in vivo, ex vivo, whether whether they're doing it in mice or human cells, how are they going to deal with the the fact that ageing isn't considered a disease? What will be their clinical trials based on? What is their therapeutic modality? Is it efficient? Is it safe? Do they have FDA regulation? And then there's the more generic challenges of actually trying to hire the right team, as there seems to be, to some extent, more capital available than talent. And this is better reflected in this quote I found from a McKinsey article. If the industry is to maintain its recent strong growth, it will need to address three key areas, building talent, handling complexity, and improving commercial and development execution. Handling complexity refers to the scaling up of the tech, finance and investment vehicles and keeping up with the speed of innovation. And then improving commercial and development execution mainly refers to the idea that scientists are trained as well, scientists, and we focus on the biology when it's more important to appreciate how their product fits into the market and competitors to better meet investors' expectations. But all in all, the field is still young Given the current trajectory of rejuvenation biotech, the pace of new discoveries in this field, and the amount of capital coming into the sector, rejuvenation science and biotech will most likely explode in the coming years. Now, whether I'm biased by what I read online, which is very likely, damn echo chambers, but rejuvenation biotech does seem to be the next big frontier in biotech. Although I still don't think we are over with the CRISPR and the mRNA delivery systems, In fact, they are being incorporated by these companies, and also just ageing longevity in general can be considered in its own big blossoming of interest and investment at the moment too. But anyway, I'm just a kid with a computer who does science research, and I evidently don't know everything about biotech, but what I do know is that there are now many biotech job opportunities available, especially in new startups. And this is why I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, workinbiotech.com. Workinbiotech.com is the perfect platform for finding job opportunities at small biotech startup companies. It's up to date with new jobs added daily, easy to use and lists job opportunities from research scientists, supervisors to accountants. I've already been using it to think of potential job opportunities from when I finished my PhD. You can find a link to the site in the description below. So I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.